right, so calling tonight's parks order. Um, if we could, do I have a motion to approve the May 7th minutes? Okay, now I'm on. Oh, um, I will make a motion to approve the minutes with a couple of things. One in number two, the spelling of COVID. I don't want to be too loud in this thing. And then I have a suggestion based on uh, discussion and a uh, point that I made in number C, which is the lighting uh, in Nine Spring Golf Course along the roadway along Fish Hatchery. Yep. Um, I have some uh, suggested additional text that I would like to add on to that paragraph in the minutes that ref reflect uh, what we're discussing. And the reason is that uh, this going to court and then uh, removing the restriction on lighting in any part of Nine Springs Golf Course, this resolution right here allows the limited easement, blah, blah, uh, for the along fish hatchery, for the walkway along there. Mm -hmm. But I did raise the point that this uh, re restriction removal for Nine Springs Golf Force also allowed lighting in the future for possibly that neighborhood hub. So what I would suggest at the end of the paragraph, I'll read the last sentence at that par in that paragraph. It says, as you recall, City Legal also went to circuit court to amend the deed restrictions on the Ninth Springs Golf Course property to allow for lighting on this of this walk bridge, period. Now change that to a comma mm -hmm. and add, and possible lighting, comma, with future approval, comma, for the neighborhood hub. Does that sound like it reflects our discussion? No, no, no actually the neighborhood hub would not would not be on the nine springs golf course property proper i thought it was some on the north side of traceway and some on the south side but but that's not part of the actual the nine springs golf course proper but i i we could we could certainly put it in there um that's i remember the conversation that we talked about the hub and how it was adjacent to the lighting but I, I guess my takeaway was that it was adjacent and could benefit from the lighting, but that the lighting wouldn't necessarily be located in the hub. But I don't know if that's speaking accurately either. How about if I reword that to just say, comma, and possible lighting, comma, with future approval, comma, in other parts of Nine Springs Golf Course? It would be within the Nine Springs Golf Course, if I'm understanding correctly, Scott. Does that sound... That'll be, I, I think that'll be fine, Sarah. I think that'd be fine. Okay. Does anyone want to second Patrick's motion? I can second that. Thank you. Okay. All those uh, that approve May 7th meeting with Patrick's adjustment say aye. 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 Any opposed say no or nay. All right. I may ask it for that, Patrick. Okay. All right. May 7th minutes are approved. Then moving on to public appearances. Um, I believe Phil is here for Terravesa, so um, I don't see anyone in the crowd at all, so we'll close for public appearances. And then for the reviewing and approving of tonight's agenda, does anyone have anything that they'd like to suggest moving, or can we, um, is there a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? I will move to approve the agenda for tonight. Second. Thank you. All those in favor of approving the agenda as is? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we can move forward with the agenda then. The first discussion and action item is 5A, the Terravesa South Park Master Plan. Um, Scott? It, it, and actually, it, tonight's, uh, what, what we are looking for uh, is, a, certainly we don't need to approve the concept plan in whole, but the, the main objective uh, for tonight's agenda item is to make sure that we have the correct location for the playground, uh, because that playground has been uh, a bid and awarded and we're looking to get that installed uh, sooner rather than later so at the end of the day tonight as long as we can approve the location of the playground uh, and certainly if we approve the concept plan or the site plan for the for the park that's that's fine too but uh, what we could do in theory if if we need to is adjust that plan and then bring the plan the whole plan back to the 
August meeting for final approval, but I, I do want to confirm the location of the, uh, of the playground. I have a question. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Uh, where I I don't I think that where the location of the playground is fine. I am wondering if if where the trees are shown is that exactly where they would go. Uh, I, it's always my idea that a playground is going to benefit most from tr mature trees when that time comes on the south and west sides. Uh, deciduous trees, because your east sun, where we show the trees uh, shading east sun, that's your coolest part of the day in the summer. So is that possible to adjust the tree location? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I actually envisioned, you know, trees on the north side and the west side for sure, um, just as a, as a bit of a buffer between the playground and there is a sidewalk that's going to be running on, on both both sides, both on spinach and, and Frisbee Drive, so there, there's going to be a little bit of, of room there. There could be terrace trees, and then we're actually looking to try and have a little bit of space between the, the sidewalks and the playground itself mm -hmm. uh, to provide some some shade opportunities, but you know also a little bit of protection uh, uh, for the playground. You're right, there will be terrace trees throughout the neighborhood. So the idea is the terrace trees. So the idea terrace is the terrace trees, trees would be providing the, the shade from the west. Yes, well, and, and the north. They wouldn't be on. They wouldn't be on the park property on the west. So then the other area is the south, and just there's just one tree shown between the parking lot and the uh, playground. Is there any way to? bump the plaza space over a little or around elsewhere to put a tree there or no? I, I think that I mean, the trees can be put anywhere you want them. They, they're, right. I don't know if there's a uh, specific minimum number that have to be planted in this acreage, Scott. I, I, I would. You will yeah. have at least the terrace trees. And I think perhaps after the playground is, is um, installed that it would probably be a good idea for that, those trees outside of that little playground area maybe to be spotted. I, I would agree. I would agree. So when I look at your note, Scott, it looks like we need approval tonight just on the, the location of the playground itself right. and the swing set. So I'm looking at page six within the packet, correct? So that's we're just saying that the playground would be located within that corner and mm -hmm. then we need... And then we need to agree upon the location of the swing set. Is that kind of the motion we're looking to? Right. We the general the general location of the of the playground structure. If that's in the northwest corner, that okay. that's good. You know, as long as you don't want it in the northeast or the other corner, that that's really the first priority is to make sure that we have everyone's good with the location of the playground the way we've got it. Okay, and the specifics, though, and I'm sorry, Patrick, the, just the specifics of the trees and things like that we'll definitely be able to review in the future? Oh, yeah, we can, okay. yeah, we can. And, and certainly just taking Susan's comment under, under advisement, we'll, we'll get trees in there. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. Thank you, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Sue's question is a valid question because mm -hmm. if we need more space on the west there for trees, then the playground uh, location there might have to shift a little east or so. So it's a very valid point. Uh, question for Phil, this heavy black line, is that the boundary of the park and then is there a sidewalk to the west of the heavy black line which would be outside of the park boundary and uh, terrace outside also and then the street is farther west? Well, no, there would be a sidewalk inside of that. Um, you see there, there's black line. There'd be, there'd be sidewalk along for say, and there's a sidewalk along spinach. Yeah, but where is the sidewalk relevant to the heavy black line in the diagram we're looking at? Is it within the park boundary? It, I, I think that that looks to, appears to be where the um, the curb line, if you would, fill. So I would suspect the the. I think. I, I believe it's inside the, the thick line yeah. Um, yeah. between, yeah, it would be inside the thick line. Okay, then, and, then. And, and again, we're, you, you know, these, it, it, it's going to be field, you know, we'll, we'll field locate it. That, you know, I, you know, those kind of details, we we'll certainly aren't going to, 
you know, put the playground right next to the sidewalk and, and all those. It's kind of a site plan. It's not an engineered, you know, with, with spaces, you know, distances and, and those kinds of things. Well, certainly. Well, for a lot of points, it is. And, and uh, really, looking at the scale in the bottom right corner, 25 feet, is that much? Can you, can you speak up a little bit, please? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the scale in the bottom right corner there says 25 feet is that much space and without a ruler that looks, I would estimate, 20 feet between the heavy black line to the left and the lighter black line for the boundary of the playground. So if there's 20 feet between there and then there's going to be a sidewalk in there, then that really confines tree location. If the sidewalk is in the outside of the black line, then it's fine. Then there's another extra 20 feet of boundary, be or a space anyway, um, buffer between the playground edge and the heavy black line being the border of the playground, of the park. And then outside of that to the left, to the west, is street trees, sidewalk, and eventually curb. But we'll we'll keep we'll, mind, site, we'll site locate. Andrew, keep in mind that there's no dimensions on this yeah. plan. Uh, as Scott mentioned, that it will be some field decisions that are made. At the last meeting that I was at before we did this editing, we, the playground was closer to the corner. You might recall. Yeah. And it's, we moved it off the corner. The parking lot was almost twice this size, and we reduced it based on the conversation at the last meeting. Um, the basketball court is now it was expanded from a half court to a full court um, as a result of that meeting. But there's no dimensions on this, and all of the space, really the right half of this, this five acres basically, is open space yeah. for soccer, for skating, etc. So there's, there's plenty of movement that can be made. This is a programming diagram. So without dimensions, you know, as I mentioned, I think when, once the, the um, playground equipment is, is on its way, there probably can be much more detail put into how that's all going to work in that upper corner. But this is, this is for use. This is for uh, the park use, not necessarily specifically where everything is going to go exactly. Okay. There'll be plenty of room for trees. Um, I'm not sure who was talking about those before. But um, we're expected to pay park fees and, and uh, so much money allocated. And this is in addition to the terrace trees uh, that Scott and, and, and Anna Healy can make those decisions based on what, what kind of trees should be planted and where. Yeah, I'm not getting thank, any, thank any you kinds of trees or anything. It's just based on, I think, Sue's valid question, is it too close to the street? I know that it moved away from the street uh, from an earlier version that we saw. And, and to, to, to Phil's point, this is just kind of a, a site concept. There's no dimensions on here. Rest well, assured, we're I not see, going to... I'm I not see going a to scale put... in feet in the bottom right corner, so right. I was relying on that. Otherwise, these things would say not to scale. Uh, regarding my remark about trees, it yeah. sounds to me as though the field adjustments will be fine, and just I appreciate yeah. it being um, kept in mind that it might be nice to have adequate west and south trees. Yeah, and it's already been noted, so I appreciate that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so looking at the location proposed, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the, the location that is generic that will be used kind of at site within that corner um, for the, place, the, the playground and the swing set? Or is there any further discussion? Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I don't know why we're being specific to this, just the specific, uh, the playground and, and swing set. Can we, can we have this, the program of this park be approved so that we can do, be doing our planning? How much leeway is there? We can certainly, again, my... My, my comment was that the playground's on the way, so I definitely need to know that you're okay with the location of the playground, but certainly if we can, you know, if we can approve as a park commission the general park program for this park, that would be, that, that is the goal. That would be, 
That would be that'd be great. It says in our comments uh, with Park Pine to be approved in August. I'm sorry. It says in our notes to the Park Commission here, uh, additional amendments can certainly occur within final park plan to be approved in August if needed. If needed, right. Well, I suppose yeah. that's, you know, yeah, if we're yeah. all really happy with it, we could approve I, it now. Again, as I, as I mentioned, I, I just want to make sure the location of the playground is fine because that's on its way. But certainly if we can, you know, the goal is to approve the, the, the Terra Vesa South Park Master Plan and if we can do the program and get that approved the way the way it's laid out here generally, then then that's good. Then that gives gives us uh, gives us something to work off of. Can the I bike ask? path is in as well. Yep. Already in. Mm -hmm. I, I have a couple of questions on the overall layout. Um, I would ask why the open air shelter is to the south of the restroom because I feel like that's a spot where if families are using it, they're going to have sight lines cut off from the playground and the plaza space area. Um, I think it may be better served either to the west or the east of the restroom. If it goes to the east of the restroom, that opens up all the sight lines out into the natural area instead of it being partially cut off by the restroom. Um, I would question how the northern parking stall users are supposed to back out of their stalls and get back out of the parking lot. Um, I, I think there's a possibility of adding more shade to the plaza area, whether that's through trees or future planning for shade structures. Um, there is bike parking that is shown in the plaza area and at the very south. I would question how people using the bike path are supposed to reach the restroom or the water fountains that's up in that northern area. We don't show internal connective pathways. Anybody else have any comments? I agree with all that. Thank you for your comments. Yes. So what we would, what we in, could add is a is an internal path from the bike pad trail parking to uh, uh, to the shelter restroom, uh, and move uh, move you know maybe switch the the restroom and the open air shelter, you know north and south switch them. Would that, certainly would that, be switched or, yeah, I don't know if there's value that. to having a better sight view between the no, I agree. shelter area and the playground and the basketball court. And I, again, I, I, I could see, I could see those, those additions, yep, that would make, that would make sense. Okay. And we can certainly, you know, we can amend the plan with those, with those switches and get it approved tonight yet. So, um, what Katie's point is that not to just... Press and Not to, and leave it alone, yeah, press it and leave it alone. Not to reverse their locations, but to have, because if, if you put the open air shelter where the restroom is now, then you've lost the sight line from the open air shelter to the basketball court. Yeah. So uh, parents trying to audit what's going on with kids all over the park could see both if it was, these were east and west. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. And so... It would make the restroom closer to the parking lot and the shelter shifted over to between then that restroom and the f open space, which might be a yeah. skating rink someday. Yeah, yeah. Is well, that and that would, that would create visibility to that open play space, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I, I like that, too. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the parking lot question... Yes, how do you, unless you have room to back straight out and make your exit, you're, you are kind of boxed in in those northernmost spots. If, you know, and I just don't know when this was drawn up, uh, how to scale all of that is. Phil, to me it looks as if the parking lot itself was slid a little bit to the west, and what was intended as the uh, asphalt area provided for cars to back out kind of stayed with the playground? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I lost you there for a second. No, it's fine. The um, pathway connection from the parking lot north to the playground, I think that wide pathway was originally intended as the uh, area for cars to back out. 
so they could get back out of the parking lot, but I think that was shifted that I, over I with the playground and shouldn't have been. I think so, but... If it wasn't, that would definitely be a design... Of, of the parking if, lot. If that wasn't the case, that would be a design opportunity that I think would make sense. So what you're suggesting is shifting that path over so it's more central to the parking lot. Correct. I see. Yeah, centering the path between the two on the parking lot versus, versus centering it on the playground. Correct. Got it. And I do or think- Or else maybe we should think about um, pulling out two of those parking stalls on the north side to create that uh, Additional space. space to pack up. Well, in, in, in point taken, we need to design it in order to allow people to get, you know, back out and back, you know, drive in and back out comfortably. So that's a good, that's a good programming note. Yes, Patrick? I didn't catch Phil's comment exactly. But I'm going to comment that uh, at our past meeting when we were discussing this parking lot, uh, a couple of us, including me, asked why do we need this parking lot inside of the park? Uh, the question to Scott was, is there on-street on -street parking? And Scott said there is on-street parking. I really understood that tonight we were going to do, like our notes here said, approve the, park, the playground structure that was discussed last time and the location of the playground lot itself and nothing else and everything else was off till August. I would have, I was going to drive by and go look at the street over there and just see firsthand if there's parking allowed along the street, but Scott said there is. So I would like to eliminate this parking lot inside of there on the point that this is a small park. This is a neighborhood park. Most of the people from right here in Terra Vesa are going to walk into there mm -hmm. and Anyone coming here uh, from farther away is, I would think, be pretty rare because Terra Vesa is a long ways from the rest of the city. So I think this is primarily and almost exclusively for the use of Terra Vesa. So cars coming here could just as well park on the street. And that gives more room for us to shift things around inside of this whole area here. Uh, as Katie said, there's problems with this parking lot design, so let's eliminate it. But I really thought we were approving the playground location and playground equipment tonight. That's all. I guess, Scott and Phil, if we don't approve the full park plan, do things become delayed? I mean, can we just move forward? Or what would you recommend? I, no, I, I don't think it delays anything. I, I, you know, the, the playground equipment is all that's been ordered, I believe, yeah. Yeah. by Scott. Yeah. Didn't you already approve that? It, it is yes, it is approved, and it's it's going to be on its way shortly. Uh, okay. and, and again, so, I mean that's really the only urgency, right. Right. so that can be um, constructed. My only point was so we could continue to refine this plan if we had the right programming done. And I I think Patrick's mm -hmm. point regarding parking is well taken. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were probably almost twice that size last time with the parking lot. And if you wanted to eliminate it, I'm all for the more uh, permeable area out there rather than creating more asphalt. Um, so if you like, maybe that's something that you could give us some guidance on. So my notes do, from the last time we talked about the parking lot, I do show that it was bigger but that we talked about how there's a potential that people could be parking at this park to bike in, that it was close to the Capitol Trail. And then also just that um, there were options of people potentially meeting at that park because of the open space to play. So there was some back and forth. So I don't know, I guess there were pros and cons because I, I do agree with Phil, I can't find my older picture, but that um, I, I, it was larger yep. and it has been definitely cut. It is reduced. And I might add too that it, certainly it is a, a, a safe refuge for uh, in theory, if someone's using the shelter or, or those kinds of things, or, you know, it just provides a, a couple, you know, parking stalls for, for visitors in, inside the park, so. 
I think if if um, groups are coming to use the you know say there's a, a group of soccer players coming you know to use the park or um, you know with hockey gear in the winter, I think there's value in having some parking spaces that are easily loadable and unloadable and aren't dependent on street availability. Um, you know, we don't want to go overboard by any means, but I think there is definitely some value in having some off-street parking there. Sam, my opinion would be to eliminate the parking lot. Um, it's a small park, and there's street parking. Yes, Patrick. I would compare this to... Ed, does some parking provide a better um, accessibility for those who have a difficult time getting around? Well, that's a good point, too. I would compare this to Swan Creek Park. I think, well, Swan Creek Park, I, I believe, has a larger shelter. It is rented. Uh, we don't have a design for this shelter because Scott told us last time this is just a concept. There's no design. There's no size or anything to it. But I would imagine this shelter would be smaller at the Swan Creek Park, which has a sizable enough shelter, which is rentable. There's no parking. There's no parking lot inside of the park. It's all on-street parking. And, so and, I think that's very and, and valid I guess, to uh, use the same reasoning here. And, and I guess it would be my thought that there would be some value to have some minimal parking within the park itself because it does provide convenience and safe refuge. So I think it is a, a, you know, a good design uh, a component for, for a park. So you know, six or eight parking stalls I, I think is, is nice to have. Yes, Katie? I'm just not familiar with the uh, overall plat that surrounds this, and I see there are a number of small lots and larger lots that are to the north of this one. Are they apartment lots? Is there expected to be off-street parking associated with those lots, or are they going to be parking on street? That'd be a question Both. for Phil. Yeah. They yes. all have garage accessibility, um, but if somebody has three cars, just like most people, they have... Uh, a two-car garage that might be a car on the street. And Patrick, your reference towards Swan Creek Park, that does make me think living on Crinkle Route, that road was completely packed from Ultimate Frisbee, and that if I had guests come over, it would be really difficult because the parks are great. They're popular. People do come and use them, and if there is an event, the off-street parking could be difficult, That that's how I could... I thought the original parking lot was too large, but... This smaller lot, I think, seems sensible for people using, in my opinion. So for feedback, then, we've had feedback on um, rotating the restroom and the open-air sh shelter to provide additional visibility and making them parallel. Mm -hmm. um, a, reviewing the parking lot uh, especially to have that last row have accessibility or potentially remove the parking lot. So I guess I, are there additional questions or is there any interest in making a motion to approve the overall park space or just the location of the playground and swing set? I'll make a motion to approve the overall design with the refinements that we uh, all suggested, including, including the parking lot. Including? Including, including it. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. All right, second by Christopher. So the current motion is to approve the entire park plan but putting in Katie's recommendations of the parallel restroom open air, including the parking lot, but adjusting the parking lot to make it accessible. Um, a, a path, a path from the. Oh yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the path from the bike shelter to the bathroom. Uh, bathroom. Yes, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Sue. Is that correct? Yeah. The, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. I want to make an amendment on the rules of meetings here to see if this gets any further to not approve the parking lot as it is. So I don't think we can make an amendment because we well, have a motion on the table. This is an amendment onto Sue's. So but I, be... don't we have to vote on the... No. 
This is an amendment onto Sue's, so this oh, so Sue would have to approve Sue is saying of her. all of it. I'm saying take the parking lot back out. Ah, sorry. So mm -hmm. Sue, you have to Sue and Christopher would have to agree to this that, request for a friendly amendment to the. No, amendment. I'm not saying a friendly amendment. <laughs> but then we'd have I, to we have to we vote, vote on Sue's five. amendment. We have well, to vote. We, we we've got to vote to, if there's a second on Pat's. There was. There's a second. Oh, so I apologize. Is there a? Yeah. Is there a second on mine? Oh. No, for Patrick's amendment now. Is there a second? I am Patrick's? amending Sue, so I need a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm sorry. So does anyone have a second for Patrick's amendment to remove the parking lot? Uh, move, remove the parking lot approval From at this point. Approval, yes. The other things, okay. Got it. Got it. I'm not hearing a second. So let's move forward with Sue's motion and Christopher's second. So all those in favor to approve the park plan with the modifications noted, say aye. 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 All against, say nay. Nay. In my opinion, it appears that the ayes have it. Uh, Scott, could you send me um, just some, some comments on this sketch, yep. on yep. this drawing tomorrow, for the next few days, next week? I can do that, Phil. I can do it, that. That reflects the comments and the and the um, the motion and approval. I will do that. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Thanks very much. All right. The next discussion action item is the Veterans Memorial Park Plan. Scott. In in this, um, uh, some of you have have seen this already, uh, and and actually what the. Uh, the, the committee is very interested in moving forward on the entrance memorial. Um, and, and what they have done is they've actually, uh, there's a, a rendering on page 15 of what that uh, entrance memorial will, will look like. Uh, and then actually, too, on page 16, there's a more detailed uh, a site plan because I know that was something that the the, the park commission was uh, was was looking for, uh, and then actually there's a foundation plan for that entrance monument because the the donator of the uh, of the work needs to have an idea of what that foundation needs to be for that monument. Um, so at this point, I guess what. Uh, what we're looking for is, uh, you know, certainly comments on on the site plan, uh, but similar to the Terra Vesa, uh, the the committee is really interested in getting going with that that entrance um, that entrance memorial. Um, and Scott, I, can you remind me? So I have walked down there, and they do have the circle. Um, Graveled, but this is more looking for this, the, 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 the now they're beginning to start to implement the specific got it you know the, the different monuments around uh, around the um, you know if you look on the page seven you know it's really a, a, a rustic kind of a general idea of what there's a circular loop within the park. Uh, and the monument that they're looking to get approved is right at the entrance by my by my cursor there, and all these other monuments will will be placed as you know as time and resources allow. But they really want to get this this entrance monument in um, and continue to move with the project. Uh, they have worked with Peckman Memorial, and this is the design on page 15. Um, and, and this has all actually been paid for by, by the group, um, including the site plan, which was done by which was done by Quam, which was a request of the Park Commission to get more detailed uh, uh, planning, uh, and then they also uh, paid for the um, the monument foundation. Um, so I guess what we're looking for is an approval of the monument concept and the location and. Um, and, and, and certainly as, as it continues to develop, there'll be you know, more details on what the next monument would look like and, and all of those kinds of things, but it would fall within that, uh, that site plan. Um, so you know, approval of the site plan would be good along with that, that, um, that entrance memorial. 
Scott, can I ask a question about the pathway layout? I do realize the pathway is already in place. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, is an accessible entrance going to be constructed for this pathway? And has ADA accessibility for that existing pathway been confirmed? The accessibility to the entrance, the, it'll come right off the playground or off the, the parking lot, but accessibility of the original, the internal path may be difficult, although there is opportunity on the other side of the evergreens to create an accessible path okay. to, to go around. I mean, I realize we're working with existing topography, yeah. but it is yeah. a user group, I feel, that Absolutely. takes yet Absolutely. extra concern here. Absolutely. And could affect where the monuments go. Although I like the, I, I am fine with where this and, particular and, monument. And if you look at my cursor, cursor, you know, this is where the existing thing, and actually the, the grade, you can come off here and the grade is really, really level. And they could get up here and then, you know, certainly come down. Uh, but to get access up here, it, it may be difficult for them to come this way. So the idea of a potentially an additional path, and we, we did discuss that, to come this way around to get access to the path. Because okay. I know, yeah, right now there's just an existing curb head at the start of that pathway. Yeah. There is no ramp. No, right, that'll be yeah. cut and, and all of those kinds of things. And even, even the idea of within that parking lot, coming into the parking lot, the entranceway, you know, this paver and, and all of those kinds of things are still kind of in the works, but they really wanted to get this signature memorial there to kind of indicate that things are happening and and uh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome, Katie. A uh, question in the earlier diagrams that we saw of this park, there was a second loop to the north. Is that a future option or is that dropped at this point? That's dropped at this point. Okay. That's dropped at this point. I did walk through it last fall and there was nothing useful to see walking around in the area north of this loop. This, this loop was already in with gravel, so I could tell where yeah. that was. I have a question about, I know we're talking about definitely looking at approving that entrance monument, the entrance to the loop, but did you also say, Scott, about approving the entire layout? tonight as well? I'd, I'd like to get that, the site plan that Quam, that Quam produced. So that, that means the exact locations of the other monuments. Is that what? I would say that that would be fair. Certainly we, we may need to adjust them, but actually what Quam did is they went out and, and GPSed. So this is exactly what that, what that path yeah. looks like. And there may be Obviously, this is two-dimensional, um, and I hope everyone doesn't get the wrong impression. I'm not always just worried about trees, <laughs> but I'm going to make a tree comment here. If you enter here and go past the, the entrance monument and take the path off to the right, you'll see a monument on the right, and then one on the left, and then you'll see the next one on the right is right beneath an existing tree, and if I'm correct in assuming that's roughly the size of the tree right now, how much does the monument weigh that's gonna be plunked on top of the tree roots? Yeah. And couldn't it be shifted a little absolutely. further along absolutely. where there may yes, not be absolutely. any? And, and we, you know, you, you have to trust us too, Sue, that we, you know, we wanna stay outside of drip lines and, and right. those kinds of things. So we, we will make those, those field adjustments. Yeah, good, because that's the, the only one that seems, you know, if and I'm sure they took the time to put the trees to scale. That's the only one that seems like it's within the drip line. Or and, and, and again, those, depending on how many monuments we end up, there, you know, there's costs for each of them. They, they may be adjusted. Yeah, those are and, big and, unknowns for them. And what we may do when we come the next time is, okay, you know, the entrance sign is here, and we've kind of decided the monument isn't going to be good here. We need to move it over here and, and those kinds of things. So, it, you know, certainly... We would come back if we decide that we're going to change the different location, you know, change locations of the of the monuments. And then the future, the access to this park, the actual parking lot is in really poor condition. Yeah. But that's not a topic for discussion. 
scope right now. No, okay. no, but but certainly, I like I say, we, the idea of of uh, a paver entrance. You know what, what's nice is that that site. You know, even with the parking lot and even going further to the south, there is a lot of a lot of room there, so we can do some, you know, some improvements to the to the entryway. Uh, in the parking lot yeah. and, and those kinds of things. Because I'm concerned even the the exit from the parking lot onto Fish Hatchery Road and not being an engineer, I, I could be wrong, but it just seems that it's at the wrong place and you've got room to shift the entrance further south. We could, sure. The, where you might have better lines of sight to the oncoming yeah. traffic. Yeah. And so, again, down the road. Right. Well, that's a good point there. I, there's a lot of room for to do a lot of stuff there. So Scott, you're looking for then approval of, without a doubt, that main entrance monument, and then the overall site uh, on page 16 for that plan that's proposed. Yes, that'd be that'd be great. And yeah. if there were to be a change, it would come back to us. Oh but yeah. As it oh, stands yeah. right now, this would be kind of us signing off on that monument and the original. Design. Proposed, and so they could move forward. Got it. Yep. Any additional questions, or would anyone like to make a motion? I have a question. Um, do you know, was there a reason why the different monuments along the path were placed where they were, other than the main? I, I, Chris, uh, I, I, I think it was, a, it was more of a case of they were trying to come up with a number of monuments for the different... Um, so I I don't know. I, certainly the certainly the one where my cursor is that one is really kind of designed as as a vista, uh, kind of a solace uh, a solace kind of uh, kind of location. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there was really a, a, a rhyme or reason for the location uh, of these other ones. Um, more more a quantity of what they were. Okay. I think there might be, it, it, it might be nice to um, provide a little bit more of a rhythm the way they're placed with some alternating, you know, one side and then the other without, uh, you know, it kind of skips around and then you have some duplicates on one side and then we're back to the other side. If thing, if they can just be, um, you know, outside where, or inside, outside or inside, you know, alternating perhaps left and right, then left and right as you go one way around the circle. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Provide a little bit more of a rhythm as you're walking through. Um, as it is right now, there's not really a discernible pattern. Um, so, not that things are hard to see when you're here, but you don't Boy, necessarily that, know where to find very, the next one. That's very helpful. That's very helpful. Thank you. Any other additional questions, or would anyone like to make a motion potentially with Christopher's feedback of to be considered within the site plan? I'll make that motion, and to include uh, consideration for uh, the rhythm. The ri yeah, the rhythm of the uh, of the elements of the. Uh, of the monuments, mm -hmm. and um, with the understanding that when it becomes closer to each of these being placed, there's um, topography and features to be considered as well. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed aye. no? Any opposed nay? All right, motion passes. Thank you. 5C, 2021 operating budget, Scott. And in this, uh, I, I basically included uh, this packet of, in, you know, this information in last last month's uh, a packet. Um, you know, I don't know if we want to spend a lot of time. Um, maybe if we if we start on, well, maybe just a, we'll start on page 18. That's just really kind of a, a, a host report of, of the department, the different, you know, the different. Uh, um, divisions, if you would, a little bit of budget information, and then uh, some general park information. Uh, page 19 is, is really a, a, 
what do you want to call the or the organizational chart? Uh, and th then what's really kind of uh, important too is the staffing levels uh, that we've had within the department over the over the years. Uh, I did include on page 20 because uh, I do think it's it, it's important that you know it's it's recognized the, the work that the recreation department does in regards to revenue, our community center rental revenues, park shelter athletic field revenues. You know, those to me are really a, a, an indication of the, the public's uh, satisfaction with, with the, the facilities that, uh, that the Parks Department provides. A little bit about, uh, you know, significant accomplishments, new initiatives for 2020. Uh, and then actually starting on page 21, we get into the, the actual line items of the operating budget. Uh, in Parks... Before we get too far, Mayor. Yep, yep. Question on back on page uh, 1819. I was looking at the staffing there and uh, couldn't quite figure out uh, the second paragraph park maintenance operations under management. Um, so we've got the park supervisor Joran, and then I count four maintenance workers mm -hmm. Cindy, Mike, Norbert, and TJ. And then there's a streets parks maintenance worker Steve. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's four in parks and then one is, I don't know, shared between parks and streets? Yep, yep. Okay, so then on page 19, uh, towards the bottom under reports to park, to reports to public works director, uh, there's a supervisor, that's Joran, then public works maintenance parks lists four people. So I'm taking that to be the four parks maintenance workers on 18. And then I was trying to figure out there's an LTE public works maintenance parks is who is that is who is that see I, I, I think they may classify because that that um, Steve kind of goes between he works in the streets in the winter and then the parks during the summer so that might be but it says LTE yeah him as full-time if if you look at the line below steve's name where they show four three-month park maintenance seasonal staff that adds up to 1.0 oh, yeah. there you go which and, yeah on page 18 Thank you. below 80. steve's name where you have four three-month seasonal workers those three months add up to 1.0 is that what it is yep that's exactly what it is okay. see you, you know you know the department better than i do katie <laughs> And then the, uh, the, the, the point three is the City Hall campus maintenance. So then on page 19, the position of street slash parks maintenance worker, which is Steve, he's not on page 19. No, he's, he's included in the public works. I think somebody wants me to. In the public works. Walk closer. Okay. Okay. In, in, in the public, he, he's listed in the public works. Okay. Good, Patrick? All right. So then, you know, the big thing uh, in the operational budget, parks, line 290, uh, um, there's $50,000, but we're looking to increase it to 70. That's the median mowing and maintenance. Uh, we, we, we have contractors that come in and maintain the medians on fish hatchery, um, uh, McKee, and boy, there's, there's a lot of roundabouts and uh, and and we we've increased that because the amount of the amount of uh, medians and, and roundabouts that we're maintaining is increasing. Uh, we are looking to increase the prairie long grass burn maintenance from 15 to 18, and then the big item is the uh, McKee Farms Park tennis courts for 165 along with the fence. Uh, and then I did include, for, for your benefit, we did have a, uh, an evaluation of the McKee Farms uh, tennis courts, and this is where I, I received the, or got the information. We, we are recommending the crack membrane and color coding uh, treatment, which was, and this was back in 2000, 2018, uh, was 90 to 110, so we did add a little bit along with the, um, Along with the fencing, which they uh, budgeted for fifteen to twenty thousand um, dollars, so that's the big item 
uh, in, in park operations. Sure. Um, in the section 290, uh, the 55,500 for neighborhood forestry. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago, there was, a, is that where the Arbor Day uh, funding, anything that comes from there? No, the, the Arbor Day funding is in the volunteer. Uh, oh, where the heck are the other? Oh, there they are. On page, if you go to page 20, Twenty-eight. Oh, okay. At uh, three forty, you see event volunteer activities two thousand dollars. That's where the Arbor Day stuff is. Okay, and a question about that: Was that done one year up in the northern part where the the uh, hub is being redeveloped, that where there's some trees planted? Yes, there was. And I think that was really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I don't know if there's enough money there to well, and, there, and the, or there, I think there's a need, probably a need there still. Well, and, and, and there's and, needs everywhere. And, and to, well, and to your point, it was one of our healthy neighborhoods that the idea of landscape adds value to the healthy neighborhoods, and that was really one of the initiatives for that. Um, so the way it's um, proposed for 2021 20, would allow for something more work to be done in that area? Cer certainly. And, and that, Anna coordinates the Arbor Day activities, um, so she kind of works with, with different different groups that are interested in doing projects, okay. that kind of thing. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question about 290 as well. Yes. Um, one thing that I have asked in the past, because I've been asked by other people to ask this, the median mowing and maintenance um, you, Scott, have said in the past that those contracts with the outside vendors for mowing the medians has been very successful, uh, economical, everything. And I had asked, what about mowing some of the parks that are way far out, like at uh, uh, Perry J. Shappy and Briarwood and everything. And then we do have a bunch of pages in here, every little square foot practically of park uh, that Garin provided, yeah. <laughs> well, that's kind of overkill about all this detail. Um, but Joran presented a, or, or gave us this information at the last meeting, which I think, as I read through this and tried to work it out, I think it's a rather un, unequal comparison because medians are very tight and narrow and they've got trees and whatever things, posts and everything in them. So to try and equate acreage of a median mowing to acreage of a wide open park where they're zooming through with a 16 foot wide mower is not an equal comparison. So I still am interested in hearing the median mowing contract or another contract similar to that to see what it would cost for these private landscaping and mowing companies to go to the very far away uh, parks in Fitchburg where um, they, they may be traveling around on a route doing private lawns and business lawns and everything like this, and they could stop in at a distant park and mow it economically while they're there as opposed to the park's crew on the 16-foot wide mowers driving on the road and um, putting a lot of wear and tear on the tires. And I, and I also saw, it seems to me, when you traded in the first 16-foot wide mower, I think there was notes in there at Wisconsin plus it is that there was a lot of wear and tear on the tires so the farther they have to drive on the road to get to a distant park the more they basically wearing out the tires and these other private companies may be in the area for other business already so I'd still like that pursued okay now the other comment about the McKee uh, tennis court here just for new members uh, two years ago the Park Commission here did reject the 25,000 for fence repair. And then last year, the Park Commission approved it, but the mayor took it out of his budget. And so now the whole thing is back, plus a lot more for 165,000 to do not only tennis fence repair, but to put this membrane down. I looked at the McKee tennis court surfaces uh, just as uh, Fred Colkman there analyzed and wrote up in his report, I looked at it last fall. I saw just what he saw. I went there again 
earlier this week and walked around on it, looked at it. The, as he calls it, as Fred calls it, the principal playing area is in great shape. Um, most of the courts, their playing surface on the court has no cracks in it except for two things. Uh, the north side courts, the north side of the north side courts has one thin crack that goes east-west. It's probably one of the narrowest cracks in there and Fred explained that in his analysis. Um, the other cracks that are in there are between the courts, just exactly as Fred describes also, where they are supposed to be. And Fred even says in his report, the control joints are working exactly as they're supposed to. So I, I don't see the purpose of putting this membrane, membrane down on a good surface on all of these courts. And what I would like to find out uh, from uh, somebody doing a little research is what would it cost the Parks Department to buy a pneumatic post driver as I've seen one of the uh, fencing companies in the area use one time where you put this hammer thing on top of a post and you push a button and it drives the post in in a minute. So what, is it, what does it cost to own one of those and then you could use it on any post anywhere you want. It can't cost fifteen or twenty-five thousand dollars to own one of those. So if we bought our own and you can use it anywhere on any tennis courts or baseball field posts that, that need to be either driven down or pulled out or replaced, anything like that, that may be ec more economical. So is there a, a, a motion in there or? Nope. No, no Scott, well, the, so the membrane then, the reason for, if you can go over again, the reasons that you would prefer the hundred sixty-five thousand right. dollar membrane. In, in, in tennis courts, basically, once you resurface them three times, uh, the paint it, it, you're not able to put another. It, it's not advisable to put another coat of paint on it. So after it's been done three years, what they suggest is to remove all the paint and then redo it again, which is what this would do. Uh, certainly, you know. In, in Fred's on page 25 and Fred's uh, recommendation, what he would what he would recommend or another potential option is just to fill those cracks uh, for 12 to 15,000, uh, which which is potentially could be done. But at the end of the day, at some point in time, we're going to have to maintain maintain those those tennis courts. Um, so the the thought is, well, if we're gonna if we're gonna do something, let's uh, let's let's do it all at once uh, and get that six to nine nine years of of of, um, of wear and tear on them. Um, and and I, I will tell you too that we have a lot of a lot of tennis courts within the within the community. Uh, and the mayor in his and we've got a little bit of an update on what the mayor's uh, CIP uh, plan calls for. And he actually took. The dollars out of the repairing the the neighborhood tennis courts, uh, with the idea that okay, our, our the tennis courts that we're going to have within our park system is going to be in McKee Farms Park, which is our, one of our community parks, and, and along with you know our pickleball courts are going to be at McGall Park, which is going to be our other our other community park because we just don't have the capacity and the resources to maintain all of them. So the idea of okay. You know what, McKee Farms Park is going to be our, you know, our our park, our, our tennis courts within within the within the system. So that too is is kind of a, an idea of hey, let's let's get the let's get the cracks filled, let's get it cleaned off, let it's you know let's get a membrane on there, so it's so it's it's good to go for a while. So I guess that's you know a little bit of the rationale on 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 that recommendation. Um, you know, and whether, you know, with the way the budget is now, I, I don't know. Uh, but I tell you, you could, you could lose a small, <laughs> a small child in those expansion cracks at, at McKee Farms Tennis Courts. If but you're... those are the ones between the courts, right. which even as Fred says, they're working as they're supposed to. They don't mm -hmm. affect the tennis game. Absolutely. But if you're, if, you're, if you're playing tennis and you're running, you can, you can trip on that's it. That's outside of the bounds. I mean, I would urge the, the other court. members to go take a look at the surface and see if it, if it so seems to justify stretching a sheet of membrane, whatever this is, over the entire 
hundreds of feet of tennis courts it, versus it, it, compared it, to the condition of the playing area now. And I can I guess, I, I, I feel that, you know, in order to maintain our courts, we, we need to, at a minimum, do, do the expansion crack fill. Uh, but as I just explained, you know, the rationale between, you know, with park staff is let's, let's do this cracked membrane and color coding uh, to maintain the court. So that's our recommendation and certainly that's, you know, if there's any other questions or, you know, it's up to the park commission. And like I say, I, you know, the, it's gonna be a tough budget year. Um, so, you know, and I, th I, I really do feel it's, it's staff's responsibility to make people aware of these conditions and make our recommendations and certainly the park commission can, can weigh in with their thoughts and ideas, uh, but I, you know, I want to make sure that the Common Council knows that, you know what, you know, they're, they're in need of repair. And, and I certainly understand the, the priorities and, and those kinds of things, but still feel it's our job to, to let the Council know what, what, what our thoughts are. And, and Scott, just to clarify, this is the crack membrane and color coding is both a crack filling process and a full entire court resurfacing. Correct, where it includes getting rid of the, the old paint, like I say, that needs, you know, in order for it to ad adhere, they recommend after three, you know, what we do typically with our courts is we'll, you know, when they begin to crack, you'll fill them and recolor them. Fill them, recolor every two or three years, but then after three years, they say that the, the paint just doesn't adhere, so what you gotta do is you gotta pressure wash all the way down to the you know, to the surface, whether it's concrete or blacktop, so you get that adhesion, um, and that's what this that's what this would do. Are you saying that it, its current condition is that the top layer is peeling off, or the what next layer would peel off, or what? what? What I'm saying that the next the next color coating that we need to do there needs to be a process of taking off all of the existing paint and putting on a new color coat, because we've done it at McKee two times or three times, I believe where we've repainted them. So even that would be more than what was earmarked at 25,000? Uh, 25. In the past. Ah, uh, the 25 was for the fence repair. The, you know, because- Oh, the, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the fence- I'm looking what, at the wrong line. Is the, is the fence is coming yeah. up and the tennis balls are going underneath. Okay. So we're looking to pound Fix down that the- too fence posts. Yep, sorry, I was looking at the wrong line. Scott, am I remembering correctly that in the past you had a tennis club at McKee Park and they actually left because the courts were not up to their standards? Well, no, they actually they actually left because our new, where they had to pay prior to using it, they didn't have the resources to pay the permit before they used it. Oh, okay. They, what, they, what they did is we did our permit and then they played, you know, got all their money and then we collected it at the end. So it was more of a timing, nothing to it do with, yeah. okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know, Patrick, what? you brought this up at the last meeting, though, about the insurance adjuster, and it was an insurance adjuster email from June 2019 that applied to Swan Creek, but within his um, statement, which is Ben Hoverson, Cities and Villages Loss Control Specialist, he states that typically a quarter inch change in elevation is considered a tripping hazard. And from his recommendation, he considers that you, they should be repaired, resurfaced of the court. Um, and he also calls out fen fencing maintenance just from a liability standpoint. And without a doubt, understand that this was, he was evaluating Swan Creek. But I would assume that that tripping hazard probably applies regardless from a liability standpoint. And like you said, I do think that those, I'm also looking at McKee, those cracks are significant, even if they are, working as expected, I, I still would assume that they're larger than a quarter inch elevation change. The ones between the courts? Correct. Oh yeah, they're about three inches. They're wide. Yeah. But <laughs> three. fill them in. And now the, the other report that you're talking about, is that the CIVMIC, the Cities Villages Munis, Mu Mutual Insurance yes. Corporation? Yep. Okay, that's a two page report, right? Correct. That's what I saw. I have a copy of that too. That's just, that's not the one that I think was referred to last time. Um, that was kind of the missing report. Anyway, uh, that was a very short uh, report. It meant, it, I think there was one paragraph in it that mentioned fences should be in good repair. <clears throat> that was about it. 
Just well, that, yes, that fencing it's conditions a, can result in lacerations or tripping hazards for patrons. Yeah. And just I do think it is something that as a committee, though, we should consider that we do want, I mean, within reason to be risk adverse and just provide safe parks. That I think that is something that we should consider and that um, this, I, I've been in support of this project just because I think that we need to provide safe resources and if we're, as you've said, like that gap is huge and if we're, our experts of Scott are telling us that this is what they're recommending, just in my opinion, I feel like it's a, it's something to support to make sure that people are safe when they're using it. Okay. I'm just looking at these two different reports. There's the Civic, CIVMIC report, City Villages Municipal mm -hmm. Insurance Corporation, two page report, very short, kind of covers the whole city in two pages. Uh, one paragraph on fences, I believe. I don't have it right in front of me. Uh, and then there's Fred Kolkman, certified tennis court builder. He's a contractor. He's not a really a risk yep. analysis or anything. He's a builder. You give him a job, he'll build something. Tennis courts is his specialty. Um, between those, Fred is gearing towards a national level Wimbledon type tennis court in his recommendations if you want to go that far or less than that on some of the other options. And I think that the membrane is not warranted. Um, when I was looking at the court surface again, I mean, I wasn't specifically measuring any variations in pavement level to see where there was a quarter inch or something that sure. looked pretty darn flat to me. There are three inch wide gaps, uh, control joints between the courts right where they're supposed to be so they could be filled in. I still don't see the membrane as being the necessary next step on this. I agree with repairing the fence. Um, there's boards at the bottom. I like the way their boards are working because the boards float down to the bottom mm -hmm. to cover the gap as the fence goes up. So that's the why I suggest what is the cost of our own post driver for hopefully less than 15 or $25,000 to throw it on top of a post and in one minute drive each post in. And last fall I counted the posts and looked at me in my estimation, about half of the posts could use some driving down, not all of them. So, I mean, I kind of disagreed with the 25,000 to have one company come in and do this tennis court complex. Um, and then if we've got other tennis courts all over the city, like we do, that maybe they need post driving as well, well, then there's more money spent there. I still don't agree with the membrane level of uh, repair. And I urge people to go look at it. And in, in, in I know what we've done before with the budget. It, you certainly at the end, we'll, we'll look for a, a recommendation, but if there's things that need to be voted on specifically along the way, you know, this might be something that we'll need, we should probably get a vote on specifically uh, about this. And then at the end, we'll take a vote to approve as, as amended with, with these kind of uh, adjustments, so. I apologize, yeah, so just so I believe you'd gone through the, the median, the 20K there, the 3K for the prairie, the 140 for the tennis fence. 160, mm -hmm. 100, oh, I'm sorry. 165 for the membrane and, and fencing. Okay, and then um, you were up to the, because I, would it be your recommendation, let's just go through everything and see if there's disputes, it sounds like there's a concern with the tennis courts, but do you want to- Well, we could, we could, we could, I could go through the rest of yeah, them. Yeah, do and I go through the rest? Yeah, and I'll just highlight. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then um, if we go to page, well, twenty-eight, that continues with the uh, with the operational budgets. Everything is 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 pretty much the same as it was in in twenty twenty. Uh, same thing on page twenty-nine. And then here's a, a listing of the the current staff, and the hours. Question on that. Yes. Okay. Um, why do the staff have uh, close to two full weeks of overtime? Sn snow, remo them. snow removal. Is okay. this like an allowance of they can go up to that much, or how does that work? Yeah, out? they it seems like they, a lot of overtime, two full weeks. Yeah, each. it's Saturdays and Sundays on when or or lo longer days on snow events. Okay, well I wanted to question it. It seemed high. 
I mean, there are it, public works workers. Uh, so this well, and, park, and, parks and does these the uh, multi-use paths and some in, sidewalks. In parking lots, so they're two different. And parking two different. lots in parks. Yep, two different groups. Okay, and, and then what we are proposing uh, is additional park maintenance staff, which is new proposal number one. Uh, and I kind of uh, iterate, you know, within the, in the justification, the park system, you know, has grown from uh, 522 acres in 2008 to 729 acres today with, you know, some inclusions of some new parks. Uh, and then the, it, it kind of reflects, too, that we've had, you know, back in 2008, we had 5.5 full-time equivalents, and now we have 6.3. Uh, just to kind of reiterate that, al along with, uh, you know, I think it is in, in important to to recognize the, the fees that are collected because I think that's a, a direct reflection of the services that, you know, your park maintenance and your, your recreational staff provide, uh, which is, you know, since 2000, you know, it was 107, it's gone up. It continues to go up, which is, which is good. Uh, and then also... Uh, we are recommending you. You. Some of you may remember that uh, Anna Healy is the, uh, the city forester naturalist, and she works for three days. Uh, and we did at one point have an assistant uh, for her, which was a thousand hours, which was actually uh, twenty hours per week. Uh, I did a couple years back. Wanted to get uh, get Anna an additional uh, a day, and then reduce. Uh, the, the the seasonal hours, but then what they actually did is they took out that thousand hours, uh, so we lost it. So what I'm proposing here is to not for the thousand hours, but to to do a summer uh, similar to the the park maintenance uh, a summer maintenance staff to have a, a summer uh, horticulture landscape architect that can kind of help Anna with volunteers and all of those kinds of things. So this is kind of a re a reinstatement of that position. Um, and then as, as Patrick alluded to, Jordan did put together a little bit of a report. Um, and I guess it, I, I, think it's, I think it's important that, that people realize the acreage that, that is maintained um, and, and the efficiency in which, in which that acreage is maintained. Um, I will tell you that it's getting harder and harder when we're you know, adding you know, tens of acres of, of spots and medians and, uh, but the crew is really, we'll, we'll get it done kind of, kind of attitude. So that's, that's really good. So just a kind of a comprehensive list of, of, of the, of the different uh, park facilities that they do mow. Uh, and then starting on page 39 is a recreation budget. Um, and I think we, it looks in 320 uh, we did a little bit WPRA, which is our uh, Wisconsin Park Recreation Association membership, went up a little bit. And then the music license did go up, so we're looking for an increase there. Question on that? Sure. Why is there a music license? Well, it, it, it's, 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 you have to, in order to, for all of the uh, aerobics classes, dance classes that you have within the community center, there's... Uh, there's rights to the music that these uh, that the professionals have. So uh, this is kind of an organization that, in order to use their music in a public place, you need to you need to have this kind con this this license, if you would. So. So if an aerobics instructor plays some music that they're going to, whatever dance to or exercise to or something, the city has to pay BMI. Four hundred four hundred dollars for, for the rights. rights to play the song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same thing with uh, if you, you do a movie in a park or you rent a movie, you, you know, it's $400 to rent the movie kind of thing. Is, is this an idea of if it is played in a public place, then? It's in our facility. Versus right. if somebody has a private party yeah. in a park and they turn on their boom box, boom box yeah. Yeah, and it's start playing music, they don't have to pay a license. I, I agree it's a racket, but that's that's the deal. Oh, so we we, 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 we got to pay it, and we want to we wanna follow the rules, right? Um, and that, that really, the recreation department is pretty stand, standard stuff. Um, I will tell you, well, the recreational and community center, these, what Chad does is he hires summer staff that run a lot of the enrichment and the summer programs. Uh, we had to actually let all those staff go this year. 
uh, which was which was hard to do, but with the with the COVID situation, that's what we had to do. Um, but the, this is the recreational staff that Chad that Chad um, uh, that Chad manages. You have that vacant there for. Um, yep, that's actually that's that Austin is Coss, yep right? Austin Koss. Yep, okay. and and I will report that Chad and Austin are out in the parks now. They're they're helping Jordan out in the parks, uh, which is which is good. Um. And then one thing that I failed to include originally was as part of the, the budget uh, approval is, is the fees that we charge for the shelters and the ball diamonds and all of those kinds of things. Uh, if you look at page, it's 42. Uh, that's kind of a snapshot of, of the different shelters. Uh, and one thing that we did change from 2019 to 2020 uh, which we haven't really been able to, to, because everyone's canceling their shelter reservations. Is we, the 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 2019 rates for Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday are actually the Monday through Friday rates here, and then what we did do is we did put a premium on the Saturday and Sunday, uh, so that was a, a way that we increased from 2019 to 2020, and I I would. You know, recommend that we keep this. We, you know, we haven't had any any reservations, but that's just kind of a a, a snapshot of of the different. And these are, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Those are the, you know, the nine facilities that we have available for rent. Uh, and then here's uh, you may or may not know that I'm actually the cemetery sexton. We have a we have a cemetery that I sell that I sell grave lots to and. And last year, I think we sold 20, 20 grave lots. So, um, so it is. And if you look on the on the, the revenue, I, I do include that in the revenue actually uh, on page 20. Uh, cemetery lots sold during the year. So it's actually in 2019, it was 14,295 dollars worth. So you, you guys are responsible for the maintenance of a, of a cemetery. Uh, then the community center rental fees, that's what Chad manages those. Uh, park shelter rental fees are included there. Uh, and then also our diamonds and field and courts. And actually, uh, we, in 2019, $61,000 was brought in with the fields and diamonds, uh, which, which is... Uh, and those, those are actually the same. Uh, we're proposing that we, we keep those the same as we did in 2020. I know it's quite a, a, quite a list, um, but it's pretty, pretty comprehensive. So. so I think with that. A uh, question on, I'm not sure what, let me see here. Let me see if I can find it in the packet. For the right what, uh, what is it, Patrick? Okay, the page, do I have the, the printed one that you handed us at the meeting right here? This is in the packet then, right? I That's did put it in the packet, right. Starting with page uh, 44? 42. 42? 42 is the park shelter reservation fee, kind of the table. Okay, I found the right page. Do you mind if I ask a question while you're looking, Patrick? Um, oh, okay. I believe you find page it? 46. Okay. 42, 43, right 44, in 45, the packet. 46. Um, in the sec lower part of the page right there, it says cricket mm -hmm. at Gunflint and ultimate frisbee at Swan Creek, McGaw. But it says any not applicable mm -hmm. for all of that, for mm -hmm. all the different groups? Mm -hmm. There's no fee charged? Well, we don't uh, we don't line those courts for them. Oh, that's for lining. Yeah, we don't we don't we don't line well, them. Just below there. Okay, then it says uh, ultimate frisbee stone or prairie lined and a. Uh, and not applicable, because we don't we don't line the, the, the those specific groups line their own fields. 
Uh, we charge them for rental, but the cricket group, ultimate frisbee, they they line their own field, so we don't we don't you know. Okay, so somewhere in here, I don't know where it is. Then there is a rental of the fields for them to play on. Yep, it's, this it's is this is right under. Before. It's right underneath it. Is that the one that says ultimate frisbee Stoner Prairie lined, and then there's. No, not applicable, then you just go cricket. There's four NAs, and then ultimate. below that there's an NA and a 25 and an NA and a 40. Yeah, that's for, that's for practice. That's for, where, okay, how do you know it's practice? Because it says cricket, gunflint, ultimate frisbee, swan creek, McGaw, practice. And uh, the section above it says cricket, gunflint, ultimate frisbee, lined. Okay. I saw a lot of NAs. I didn't follow what yep. that was for. Well, and, and that, that's what that, I'm asking. That, yeah, that, right. We don't, we don't line up for them, for them groups. Okay, Patrick, does that clear? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so for the budget, you need a motion to approve, please, correct? Please. So I tried to just make sure that we were calling out kind of things that differed from 20 to 21 like you did and just kind of a summary. Mm -hmm. The ones that kind of confused me were the personnel, which the thousand the thousand hours for the um, arborist and then the additional uh, new park, park maintenance staff of going, um, increasing that. Are those kind of outside of our, are those handled by Misty mostly, or how do those, because those within the packet looked like they were completed by Misty, or how are personnel, uh, do we really, do we just vote on the increase, or do we vote on specifics, or are those kind of outside of our? As far as the, the dollar amounts? No, the increase in time. Are those just kind of, or how increase do, I'm sorry, I'm kind of confused on how the personnel changes go. Well, what, what, what we're proposing is that we have an additional Park maintenance person, mm -hmm. which is which is thirty one, page thirty one. That's that's the form that we need to put together for new proposals for personnel. Okay, so it is we do vote on the additional person yep, and the additional addition thousand hours. Yep. But when it says Misty to complete, it's just that she completes that area. We still vote on the increase. In yep. We're, what you guys Thank are you. voting on is you're okay with the idea of. Proposing an additional park maintenance person and the additional, you know, proposal number two is the uh, the 400 hour or the 480 annual summer LTE for for Anna in okay. the in the in. So those those new proposals are included in the in the proposed budget. Thank you, sorry. And and those you know these are the same proposals that that we did approve in in 2020 that. And, and again, it's, you know, I think it's our responsibility to continue to recommend what we feel is needed and then, you know, the policymakers have to prioritize and make, make those decisions. So it's just basically just going to resubmit what, what we did submit in 2020. Thank you. You're welcome. So then this, uh, you're asking the Park Commission to support your request for two new, well, to filling, uh, I guess to add two positions or fill one and add another one? I don't know, to, to add a park maintenance position, a full-time park right. maintenance position, and then it's kind of a reinstatement of a, a position we had a couple yeah. of years ago, but it is a new, you know, a new in, uh, LTE to help Anna in forestry yeah. and... But these, okay, but the uh, on the dollar side of it, this is not in your budget. No. So this no. is we, all, all city staff salaried hourly, they're paid out of... Finance figures that out. Some other fund. Well, it, it, it's in. So it, it's I'm, in the it's in the park it's in the park budget because we all have, you know, salaries. But finance takes care of all of those. What you see here is really just the operational lines. Okay. Well, I'm kind of thinking. As far as we just went through the budget and all of your account numbers and everything, and there's those nothing in there that, that that. Those are operational. Those those aren't staff. Those aren't staff. Right, it's not staff. Staff are paid by finance out of they, all they, different citywide funds that pay salaries of staff. But it, but it is part of our budget. It is part of the park and rec budget. What I'm getting to is I kind of wondered why you don't ask for just five people because it doesn't count against parks <laughs> budget. Okay, <laughs> and, well, it's kind of like 
um, it's a free person if you get it, it seems like, because no, it doesn't no, count against not, your it's budget. It's not free, it costs. It costs. Okay, another thing that I was looking at here that I would like uh, some explanation, even on page 34 right here in Jorn's report, uh, it says in the equipment, right in the center of the page right there, it says equipment, 16 foot mower, two mowers, six foot mower, two mowers. Uh, those are the expensive ones. The other ones that I see, I think are small and they're a whole lot less expensive and everything. So I'm, what I have seen is these Krugs go out in pairs of two, a 16 foot mower and a six foot mower goes along with them. No? Mm. Okay, that's what I've kind of seen in the past go out. So they have two teams of two workers go out. So that's four people. Four people. You've got five people plus the supervisor already, right? We've got, the, the way they do it is we've got four seasonals and four full-time people. There's a full-timer, 16-footer, with a seasonal 16-foot. It's a 16-foot crew and they go out independently. Then we've got a full-time six foot with the seasonal six foot they're the trim crew so they go out so there's four people right there then tj yeah. that's kind of what i was thinking is there's two teams of two two teams four, of two. four people four. that go out because you've got four right. mowers that go out four mm -hmm. seats to sit in correct um so i'm kind of wondering when you're asking for a, an additional sixth person where, what are they going to do? Are they, they, there's no mower available for them. Plus, like you just mentioned, you've got the uh, three LTEs that come on in the summer, so that's three more people to ride these mowers. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering what additional uh, people are going to do? Mm -hmm. Well, Because you don't have more equipment for them to work on. Well, we'd probably have to get more equipment. Uh, but but certainly That's what uh, I was afraid of hearing. <clears throat> well, I, I, you know it's a it's a pretty vast it's a pretty vast system and, and there's you know there's there's during the summer there might be nine or ten diamonds that need to be done. There's nine or ten shelters that need to be cleaned every day. There's a splash pad. There's a dog park. There's, there's a specific person for the splash pad, right? That's a different position altogether. Yeah, but he. He does the splash pad, he does the diamonds, and he does the shelters with a helper. Yeah, this is an LTE. Like, it's got to be the lowest ranking seniority person or something that gets to ride around in the dust uh, grading the Rest ball Rest assured, Pat, but there, there's plenty of work to have an additional person, and we're, we're in need of an additional person. I do love that statistic that you said of 522 to 728 acres. Like, that's... That's a lot of land that we've added that I right. think that that's powerful to right. say just that right. the parks have grown, which is good, yeah. Yeah. but that they require work. Right. But I, I think that that's powerful and I like the... And we like, were just trying to, because we, you know, just, okay, how do I explain why well, we need people? Well, that, that's kind of the objective, you know, and then what, that when you look, okay, uh, you know, we... We continued, to, the park system continues to grow 522 acres in 2008 compared to 729, and then included in that is a new dog park, splash pad, shelter bathroom facilities at Hugo Jamestown, playground and half basketball court at King James Way, shelter at Kids Crossing, several new paths, streets, terraces to mow, along with new developments in Cory Vista, Uptown, North Park, Stoner Prairie, Fahey Fields, Terra Vesa. So, it, you know, it just... Yeah. Parks are great, but they require work. It, yeah, they do. It works, yeah, they do. They do. And and I think it's a I think it's a reasonable request. I, you know, and and, and I I try to indicate that you know what we are, these people we are bringing in money. You know, there's there's an offset of you know additional dollars that are brought in by these services. So. And and I guess what Jordan's report was just really. And try to do a, a different a different strategy of objectively saying, okay, this is how it all works. And and I tell you that, you know, they start mowing on Monday and they get around and then they start mowing on Monday. And you know your grat, you know, you know yourself at home, you know, if you can mow once a week, you know, that's the grass is pretty is pretty long. So I'm not opposed to the idea of adding the staff, but I do think it's a valid question 
to, and maybe you can set me straight, but assessing those far off distant parks, because we're having the, the people riding their mowers all around this very right. large right. This city. Is, this, is, this is what That's they do. Time those, but it's time consuming, and it's wear and tear on the equipment to go to those remote parks. And is there, whether we have six guys, five guys, or four, what are we doing to the equipment? And, and we're paying them to sit on a mower and go, how many miles? Because Fitchburg is the largest square mile city other than Mequon, I think. Mequon and Met mm -hmm. or Fitchburg may be lar the largest. So I, I think it's a valid question whether or not we add these people. So you be have to see if there's any way of assessing contracting those out, the far-flung ones. And then... And, and, and again, they, they, we, we've got mowers in the area. They go to a quadrant of the city, and then they're, they're right there. So it... You know, for them to do one or two less parks way out there when they're already out there, it just... I see. In, in, in talking to Jorn, it just, it just doesn't, make, doesn't make sense for us. Uh, we're, that's what they do. They, they, they mow. Um, <clears throat> and, and I wish Jorn could be, you know, because he could do a much better job of explaining it to you. But, you know, we're out in, the, we're out in those neighborhoods. Um, you know, so if we go out a mile... Then we go out a mile and a quarter, or whatever it might be. We're still going out a mile, and it's it's. So it, you're saying it's incremental, and I'm viewing it as first thing in the morning. They're driving all the way out to the end. Well, they they have. But they do. They have to come home and park yeah, the equipment. Yeah. And 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 I think that that really, you know, lends itself to in the future the idea of having satellite, you know, satellite shops, you know, having having a crew that's here and a crew that's here and a crew that's here is. Is you know is something to to be thought about, um. right? <clears throat> the point that I'm making though is the crew is not out there right nearby. The best examples that I have is Perry J. Shappy that is way at the uh, east end of Irish Lane, one block south of there. There's no other city park anywhere around there that I know of. So they're not just nearby and they go another block and then they do Perry J. Shappy. That one is a long ways to the east, and Briarwood is even worse because you have to go all the way, let's say south on Fish Hatchery, all the way to Highway M, and then go east a long block, and then come back into Briarwood, and then do that park in there. So there's no other park, I don't know, within a mile or so of there. They're not there, and then just hop over and do the next one. And, and, and it's again, a long I'm, ways from everything. And, a lot and, of, Again, I'm I'm, I'm asking Joran, and he's the uh, he's the uh, the park maintenance, and he he tells me that it, it it you know that's that, and I wish he you know I could get I should get him here and to kind of explain it. Maybe he could do a better job, but um, I might I'm not uh, um, I don't take this as gospel, but coming from uh, used used to having worked for a landscape contractor, so typically if if you're comparing that to an in-house cost as far as savings. They're likely, when they're figuring the cost for this, they're going to be figuring travel time from their home base just as well. Um, so regardless of whether or not they're mowing right next to this park that we're you know, hypothetically hiring them to do, they're going to charge as if they were coming from their shop. Um, because based on, uh, they, they will have a set schedule for the week, but it changes nearly every week based on weather and needs and whatever the squeaky wheel is for that week. So. Um, but they're going to have the same overhead costs the city does. They're going to have employees, and they're going to have mowers and maintenance, and they're going to um, also be needing to profit. So I would be surprised if we would be money ahead hiring somebody to mow. That's my, that's my two cents. Thank you. I was, I was taking it that um, a particular company would have a route, and they got all these private properties and business and everything, and they work it out where they're going from one, literally hop to the next, to the next, to the next. If they're going to uh, build based on distance from their headquarters, that seems like profit to them, just off the top profit. But they're going to route it so they go the least distance possible between one site to the next that they mow. So that's why I'm figuring that they, on a route, being out in the far east, far south, whatever, uh, can go to these the most distant parks 
uh, and catch them while they're driving by between other uh, contracts that they have? They will likely try to schedule it that way, but they're not necessarily going to price it that way. So that will be that'll be savings. That'll be money in their pocket, not ours. Well, competitive bidding um, will work that out so that the the ones who uh, see it as the efficiency of going from one next to there and then stopping in here and then on to the next that is right in the area, then they're going to price it according to that. You know, and, and, and one thing I would, would share, too, that we really had difficulty in getting prices to do our medians um, uh, as far as a contractor. Uh, we were able, actually, to, to get a contractor who had done it before in the past. And, and just, uh, just as a comparison, it was about $1,300 a time for them to do it, but then there was a Barnes, and, and it was like three times as much, so it was like $3,000 for for a Barnes or, or that kind of a company to, to do that, so thankfully we were able to coerce, <laughs> you know, a person who had done it before in the past at a, at a reasonable uh, at a reasonable price. It, you know, and I've done the exercise where we've compared, and, and it just it's just more cost-effective um, you know, for the for the city to, to, to maintain and to, and to mow the parks and compared to, you know, in comparison to uh, to contracting it out. And, and the reason we do the medians is because it's, you know, it, it's it's kind of a specialty. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of, you know, seems to make sense to do to do the medians. But, you know, we begin to start to get $70,000 in the contractual for medians. You know, maybe what it, at what point does it make sense that, you know what, you know, we can hire two staff for $100,000 and get more done. You know, at some point it's, it's more cost effective and, and efficient to, to hire, to hire uh, full-time people where the contractor is kind of a, you know, a bridge between, between those, uh, those full-time commitments and contractual commitments. The city staff, or the park staff, used to mow the medians, didn't they, years ago? We did. I remember hearing we from did. We did. Some of them that they did not like mowing the medians because you got traffic flying by you at 60. Well, I, I think it's a case of, okay, if you've got, if you've got so much to mow, what is the most logical, logical thing to contract out? And, and that was what, yeah. what we, yeah, along with landscape and, and those kinds of things in the medians. Yeah, it's on the front past discussions that uh, the staff and you liked contracting out with the private contractors for the median mowing. And I think this is just an extension of that. And you said that was economical and, and good uh, pricing on the contract bids and everything. So the faraway park seemed like the next uh, expansion of that. Okay, uh, hold on. I think this was this was good dialogue, and I think Christopher had some good input of kind of a business perspective that that profitability profitability lens is something we can't overlook. But getting back to our 2021 budget, so we have. The proposed items here of the median mowing inc increase, the prairie burn increase, the McKee Farms tennis fence and courts repair, the um, personnel changes, and to do sorry, the professional organization do increase, the music increase. Um, it sounds as though the one note that I have so far is that there's potentially some discussion on wanting to pull out the tennis courts. But is there any other discussion on wanting to pull anything out, or would there potentially be a motion to approve the um, the proposed budget for 2021 with the tennis courts excluded for further discussion? I have one additional question going back to the part-time person for the um, working with the forester. Did I hear you correctly to say before it was pulled out of the budget, it was actually for a thousand hours? It was a thousand hours. And now it's being re we're asking it be reinstated for only 300? 480. 400. Why are we not asking for the thousand hours? <laughs> I'd, 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 I'd rather get something than nothing. So you're, well, well, you're anticipating that we're, we're going to be told no. Well, well, but but also too, Susan, it became difficult to fill that thousand-hour position, just because it was twenty hours per week, mm -hmm. and we we typically were getting students to do that, and it became difficult. So I think it, it's going to be more successful if it's a, a summertime, a summertime, summertime LTE, -time. yeah, okay. summertime LTE position. But also, hopefully, they'll see that oh. You know, 480 hours instead of 1,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that mean that it was 
20 hours year round and now it's summer months only but full time? Correct. Okay. It's 20, 20 hours a week for 50 weeks for 1,000 hours, but now it's just going to be, you know, July, okay. August, September, or June, July, August, okay, 12, so 12 weeks. I don't, the calculation uh, is three months at 40 hours a week. Is that the 480? Yep. You tell me. Yep, it is. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other questions or potential motions? I'll move to approve the budget as presented. With nothing removed? With nothing removed. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, budget as suggested by staff. Is there a second? Second by Christopher. All right. So all those in favor of approving the 2021 budget what? as recommended by staff. What about amendments to that? I'm not going to ask that unless people propose them. I do, because otherwise we had a motion and a second, correct? I'm, I'm presuming yeah. there's no amendments unless the people speak up. I will make an amendment. Um, the tennis court fence, or well, I would like to with, uh, withdraw out the uh, tennis court maintenance repair fence repair until we find out what a post driver would cost instead. And I would like to uh, also remove the membrane for the McKee tennis courts. Okay. Which essentially I believe that's the whole 165. Correct. That's okay. the fence yep. and the membrane. Yes. So the 165 was the membrane plus the fence repair, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. So yes, that's what I, a motion a amending to remove. Okay, is there a second for Patrick's amendment? Hearing no second, we'll go back to Sue's and Christopher. Amendment. Okay, yes, Patrick. Um, I would like to make a motion. Uh, I was thinking about how to do this. I guess my motion would be to see if this works, I don't know motion to allow the parks director to request the two additional uh, positions, the full time and the 480 hours for the second, um, but that the park commission says that we're not uh, supporting the request. In other words, you go ahead and ask, but we're not asking. Is that a, is, do you understand my motion? So you'd like a motion to say that we don't support what's re yes. recommended by staff? Yeah, for these positions, yes. But still allow Scott to go ahead and ask. You know, the idea here is we're voting on this. Do we support all of this? That means that not only Scott is asking for it, but we're supporting Scott's asking for this. So I'm saying, okay. and we make it where Scott, go ahead and ask and see where you get with it, but uh, that the Park Commission doesn't support the two positions. Okay. Is there a second for Patrick's amendment? Not hearing a second. We'll move back to Sue's original, Christopher, or seconded by Christopher to approve the 2021 budget as recommended by staff. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no, nay. 2021 budget passes. Thank you. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll submit that to, to finance. Perfect. Thank you. Would you still be willing to research what a post driver costs? A post driver? <laughs> I can I can I can take a look at that, Patrick. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Scott, you're up for communication. Looks like Fahey Fields Park Plan update. Yep, just kind of a, a, an update. Uh, we continue to roll uh, with this project. Uh, I did include on page 43 uh, is the timeline. Uh, and we are getting close to uh, the bid, the bid uh, let, uh, the middle of June. I, I will tell you, too, that we're working in, in partnership with uh, the, the Tracy and the Water Department. Uh, their interns are actually designing the, um, uh, the circulation 
uh, of the water to go through there. And then Corey and R.A. Smith is going to include with our project the construction of the pickleball courts and assorted amenities along with the installation of the of the looping of the water. The, the reason we need to do that is the water is going to actually go underneath the path. Uh, so we want to make sure that the, and the idea is that we're going to, Tracy is going to allow that to be part of the let for the construction of the uh, pickleball court so it isn't two different, two different projects. Tracy has other water water main projects that she's going to be letting, but we didn't want to have two, two different contractors, if you would, because when we, you know, there would be a timing issue potentially, so it's going to be one project. Uh, the water department is going to provide the design, and then Corey is going to include that in, in, our, in our, our bidding of the, of the pickleball project. Uh, I did. I did get a response last month. Patrick uh, suggested the idea of, of making the pickleball courts uh, concrete instead of asphalt, uh, and Corey did provide a, a, a report on that, which I included in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, in your packet for your information. Yes, I did see that. Um, I wanted to note. Uh, I read that, and. It wasn't, my, uh, my suggestion wasn't specifically exactly for these pickleball courts. It was the idea of any pickleball or tennis courts anywhere because you have said they're expensive to build. They meet a lot of maintenance. The asphalt mm -hmm. cracks mm -hmm. in odd places wherever it wants to. Uh, asphalt is not put down with rebar in it. It doesn't work that way. Right. But concrete is put down with rebar. And even in Fred Coltman's, uh, analysis and his suggestion, he mentions post-tension concrete, a concrete tennis court. Um, so I was wondering if the um, lifespan would be longer. Now, I do see a kind of a difference of opinion between these two professional engineering position, uh, uh, opinions here. Fred Coltman is suggesting post-tension concrete as a viable surface. Uh, and seems to be accepting of concrete as a, um, a material to build tennis court or pickleball, I suppose, to. Uh, Corey is leaning away from it. So the two of them kind of disagree on their opinions about whether a court, tennis, pickleball, whatever, uh, could be concrete or not. Um, well, I think they, they, they certainly could. It's just there's a there's a cost associated with making it concrete in comparison to blacktop. Well, as I mentioned last month, the, the, the fish hatchery reconstruction had this same question come up. And, and the answers from, who, I think it was Strand Associates or whoever the engineers working on fish hatchery, answered that question, which is cheaper, asphalt or concrete? And they say they're about the same price. So Corey is saying concrete is more expensive. Uh, Fred Coltman is saying that's a viable alternative. And then they get into this odd thing about Asphalt is softer than concrete. I think if you fall on either one of them or jump on either one of them, mm -hmm. they're both pretty darn hard, so I don't quite follow that. There I, there I would disagree, and it, I find it really frustrating to see that uh, asphalt tennis courts require more maintenance, but there's a major difference playing on one versus the other mm. and landing on your it's harder. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is harder. landing on any part of yourself. <laughs> That's what I didn't understand. How, how is it? I mean... It, well, you know, if you're talking about a road construction, uh, sure, concrete's going to hold up better than asphalt, but those are however many thousands of pounds the vehicles weigh that are going over it. And here, it, it, is, it, it literally has, to my opinion, just more give and you really, I, you know, you maybe have to ask more people who play more than I did, but I just see a difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a lot of what Corey was saying in his email, but yet Fred Coltman, the certified tennis court builder, was saying, here's an option, build it out of concrete. So there's a difference between the two. Okay. So then we've got the McKee uh, changing room update. 
And I kind of made pictures of that structure for you. Uh, I had some comments about the uh, Fahey Fields there. Now, this is just a communication, so we're not voting on this here. Right. But I want to um, bring back again that in past Park Commission meetings for the past several months, I think, uh, we've been saying where is our opportunity for input into this uh, western addition to McGaw Park. And we kept hearing that we will have that when we kept hearing that there will be opportunities for public input. And here it is, a plan out here um, and a timeline in June to bid this thing out. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're not getting our public input into this like we were promised. Well, and, and this was this is a project that the, that the mayor wanted to get completed. I recognize um, that. And, and so, what in order to get it completed, we we needed to, you know, get the engineering done, and, and really the the engineering drove, you know, drove the location of, of the different of the different amenities, uh, the amenities that were included in the, you know, in the uh, in the park were generally approved in the McGaw Park master plan process. Okay, so bottom line here, why are we not voting on this uh, layout in the western edition of McGaw Park? This mm -hmm. is a communication item here. We didn't uh, uh, have, a, a, as a voting item, we didn't have yep. public input yep. into this. There's, including David, uh, several park planners, I believe, from experience, and I talked about that last time, but this is going ahead here with our outside consultant engineering uh, person's view, his one view, versus, you know, multiple people have multiple designs in mind. I have another design that is quite a bit different than this in mind that, you know, I've never had an opportunity to present um, at a park commission meeting, but this is going ahead right here. Um, so why aren't we voting on this? <laughs> August is going to be way too late for us to, you know, put it on our well, August it, agenda. It, you know, it, it, the project is is continuing on with the mayor's initiative that he wants okay. to build. And all right, on that point, the mayor put it in his budget last year. Last year in 2019, did anyone know what the word COVID-19 meant or pandemic or anything that has come up this year? So I recognize the mayor put it in his budget last year and come up with a lot of money to build pickleball courts. So that all sounded fine. Uh, but this year, we've got, uh, well, a lot of, a uh, whole situation is different. Now, I don't object to the pickleball courts being built if the mayor still wants them. Apparently, that is true. In 2020, apparently, that's true. The mayor can, you know, he's already found the money for it, so it can move ahead. But this year, 2020, is a whole different situation than anyone viewed from 2019 when this budget was approved. And when was this public input going to be into this design? The, the mayor provided the public input to, to, get, to get the project done. When? Uh, I can send you the email that, <laughs> you know, I, I... We've asked here in this commission, when is the chance for us to discuss this and review the designs that Corey was coming mm -hmm. up with? We asked, mm -hmm. when is the public input of any one of the public who wants to comment on this? And we kept hearing, oh, it's coming. We, we will see it. Well, you certainly have, have the ability to, to, to offer comments. It, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what to tell okay. you, Pat. Well, this isn't a voting item here. Otherwise, I, I have an amendment in mind if this was a voting item, and I want to see if this flies. I would suggest right here that the pickleball courts could be built, and if there was, let's, I'll put this in the form of a motion, even though it's not a voting item, uh, that I would have moved to approve the construction of the eight pickleball courts, because the mayor wants them, the mayor has found the money, the mayor wants it to go ahead in 2020. But I would say that I would want to exclude and, um, put off for further discussion and public input and review and possible redesign the culvert, the driveway, the parking lot, the walking paths, the shelter location and the shelter that's shown in these diagrams and the water connection. 
and leave all that for later. That way the mayor gets his pickleball courts, people can walk from the existing parking lot over to the pickleball courts, which will likely have a sign in front of them saying, these are closed because of COVID-19, you're not supposed to be on them, possibly. And so the mayor will have his pickleball course, but all the rest of this stuff right here could be reviewed and um, have an opportunity for public input later. But it's not a voting item. No, I don't, I don't know what we can, I don't know what action we can take from that, just as an, as a non-voting item. Well, then this is flying by as a communication item where uh, we're not even asked of our opinion or public input or anything here. It's just, it's just going ahead without us. Even Corey's not here to, um, you know, take any comments, but this is ready to be bid out uh, later this month. Mm -hmm. Scott, is there a chance for, so this is, you know, this plan here is, a, is conceptual and isn't really biddable in this form, so I imagine there are more documents that exist somewhere um, you know, to, to be bid on. Um, is there an opportunity for us to, to see those um, or... Well, in, in, you, you kind of, if you look on page, I don't know if this helps you, Christopher, on page 42. 42. Kind of the conceptual layout of, of oh, what the, of what the park is going to, what, and, and actually the, the park is a three-tiered, there's athletic fields to the north and athletic fields to the south. And then the middle part was going to be the active, and, and there was all intentions to you know, to get public input and all of those kinds of things, but then the mayor ordered, you know, directed me to get the pickleball courts built this year. So in order to do that, you know, what, you know, we, another thing that I might tell you too, that park planning, we, we can't use park improvement fee dollars or fee in lieu of parkland dedication for park planning, for the actual planning. So the way that I was able to figure this out is, okay, we can use money for improvements, which would be engineering. Uh, and really, the looping of the water, the engineering of, of that really drove where the shelter can be, where the basketball, where the pickleball courts can be, where the parking lot can be. So really, the engineering kind of drove, drove the site plan of, 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 this, of this area. Um, I don't understand what you mean by the engineering. Are you saying that instead of park planning, it was called engineering planning or something like well, that? Well, in, in order for me to get to be able to utilize fee in lieu of parkland dedication and parkland improvement fees was to do, was to implement a plan, was to do actual engineering, construction, all of those kinds of things. And, and what's, what's driving the location of these, the water line is going to go under the middle. So that, that kind of drives where the shelter is going to be. That's going to drive where the, where the storm sewer is going to be. That's going to drive where the, the drinking fountain is. That all that engineering kind of drives where these other things can be. And actually, the mayor says, I want eight pickleball courts with the potential to expand to 12. So what we did is to the east is we created green space to allow for the expansion of the four. Uh, and then we have the playgrounds, both on the north side and the south side, and then the shelter bathroom uh, near, uh, near the water so that we can tap into it. And then coming from the west is going to be the sewer uh, to, to provide the service for that shelter. So it, it all, you know, and in, in, in theory, it was a case of these amenities you know, it was a hard court and it was all included in the McGaw Park Master Plan in the middle here. You know, it was just a matter of where those specific amenities would be located. And that's what I'm saying is the engineering, the improvements, uh, the water line and all of that is gonna kind of drive where those different, where those different amenities need to be located. Okay, you should know what I'm gonna say about that because I said it last month. This McGaw Park Master Plan right here, this is last month's packet. Yep. And I pointed out that the heavy black line around in the McGaw Park Master Plan does not include the Western Edition because at that time it was a cornfield privately owned. So the McGaw Park Master Plan that you're referring to is only artist concept or your concept of drawing things out to the west out there on someone's private land when this master plan for McGaw Park was approved. So that's not part of the master plan. 
And this part on the Western Edition right here doesn't have anything to do with pickleball courts or anything. It's only a concept at the time. So that's not really relevant to refer to the master plan because it wasn't part of the park. When we get to this right here, um, this is all new design and everything. Pickleball wasn't even considered as part of the McGaw Park master plan. All of this leads to why I made my sort of intended motion of go ahead and build the pickleball, but not any of the other stuff until we have a chance for public input on it. So I think that would actually, if we could be, somehow make this recommendation, would satisfy the mayor's request to go ahead and build the pickleball court, so they're right there. But all the other stuff, I think, is designing a whole park without any input from the public or this commission. By the way, there was a couple of pages right here. It, it wasn't page 42, it was page 47. Has the aerial satellite view uh, showing a lot of the layout, but in the printout that I have that you gave me right here, everything kind of falls way off the page, so this didn't do me any good. And then I noticed here in the, in the packet, uh, page 48 has a layout that wasn't even printed in the packet so I didn't see this until I opened the packet. I don't know, 40, 48 has... 48, I'm using the online packet right here. It's before the changing room. Well, you, yeah. Uh, the next page after 48, page 49, is the schedule of bidding and contracts. Yeah, the, the online packet might be a little bit different than, than the packet that we're using for this meeting. Okay, well, there's a couple pages here that I didn't see it until I'm sitting at this laptop right here in the meeting. I, yeah, I, I don't know what to... Yeah, I, I don't think the page 48 on the PDF is on the online packet. It is just the page 47 with the... The schedule? Um, no, it has the schedule and then the, the uh, yeah, drawing. I, I added this, this, this drawing that one. because Corey provided this to me today because Katie actually asked for some more design details of the, of the parking lot. Yeah, I would have liked to see this too. When this is bid out, Scott, does this come back to us when we ha have more specifics? Is it like a Terra Vesa situation where we'll have no. more insight into the layout? Not at all? No. Well, I, I, th I think... We, we certainly, what, what we're gonna bid out, we're not gonna bid out the playground, we're not gonna bid out the shelter. Um, you know, the paths will be included, the water will be included. Um, the, actually the water going to the east, to the McGaw shelter is going to be included. Um, so there's, you know, certainly we can, you know, we can decide decide of, about the playgrounds and, and things like that, but there's really not going to be any other room left. Um, mm -hmm. You know, once we do the pickleball courts and the parking lot, that's going to take up the middle of the, you know, that whole middle section. Yeah. Um, and, and certainly, and again, I, you know, it, it, there really isn't much moving around of stuff when you, when you put, you know, a eight court pickleball court with a you know associated parking lot. You know, it kind of chews up the whole the whole middle part. So, you know, I don't know what what else we could. Scott, you know. can I ask that you take a critical eye critical, at sure. this plan? Sure. And review. We have hardscape trails adjacent to a hardscape pickleball court adjacent to parking lot and this shows two or three foot wide what I assume are grass strips between them there's no connection between any of those parts so how are people supposed to you know are you intending to have a concrete access to the pickleball courts um, does the spacing seem too narrow between them this is just doesn't take into account whether or not we would actually move any of the major parts around I'm just saying does having what's basically a box and then a small gap and a box and a small gap, does that make sense to you from a maintenance standpoint? And again, I think, I think we would probably, you know, field, field locate these things. I think it's something that Corey should take a look at as they do the engineering. I don't think anybody has done it there. 
So you're I'll, using... I'll be honest and say I don't think that Corey has taken a careful look at this as to how these pieces actually construction-wise fit together. You know, we've had more contact with Phil Savium and his little park in Terra Vesa than we have with Corey and this large area in McGaw Park. Another thing to take a, a critical eye at, which I think is, which, which is my main concern about it, once again, not moving around necessarily the, the, the pieces of this puzzle, but the connection from the existing parking lot to the new one just, I'll be honest, doesn't make any sense to me. No. Um, the traffic flow is, is terrible. It does, it's not aligned with anything that makes any sense. And, you know, I just, I just, I would be remiss if I, if I saw that those two parking lots and drive lanes built like that, and I didn't say that I yeah. thought it could be done better. So, it's so like you can get lost. So what would you, what would you right. suggest? Or? I think that you know a simple solution could be uh, that the connection moved further to the to the south yeah. and became more of a continuation of that existing drive lane that runs along the existing parking lot, then made a turn towards the new parking lot and went into the other bank of parking. And so it was more of a continuous loop. Right now, it's you know you make a you make a if you're going to that lot, you make a sharp right turn that doesn't really align with anything, and then you come in at this funny angle that starts to curve. You know, it's just it's just not aligned well. So so you're thinking to move this further to the south? Yep. Which yeah, you could reverse the direction of the parking flow. Mm-hmm. So it's so it, you you come up you come up if you follow my cursor Chris you come up like this yep that does do it and then you then you would curve like more in like this yes okay the problem with that that I can tell you from knowing this park really really well on site is that goes right through that cluster of trees and the the diagram on page forty eight right here uh, I would say accurately shows this cluster of trees that were saved out of the tree line right here. So that puts the driveway right through the tree. Yeah. So this is a screwy way of a driveway to get into this new parking lot. But well, taking out more trees in here is a bad idea. You see, and actually we, we have this, this yellow, this across here, there's a path now that goes this way. It's already there. It's already there. Yep. So the path kind of comes off and goes like this. But I could, you know, that's one of the suggestions I'll make. Okay. Uh, I'm back to trees, right? I'm back to trees. Well, we're if we're going to mow a bunch of trees just to straighten out the driveway, <laughs> then I'm against it. Well, I don't know if you know what this looked like before, but there was a solid tree line all along north and south along there. This cluster of trees. I as tree line. It was, it was a tree line. There, you know, a tree is a tree. A fence line, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of trees right there, and it screened the wind, and that's another problem. Now there's no wind, no no tree line, so no break. This cluster of trees had the only good trees in it, and so there's not enough trees along here anymore. So for this communication item, we have a couple critical points that yep. we're just asking for some uh, feedback on. The driveway, uh, the maintenance lines between yep. Yep. elements. Uh, anything else that we could potentially just ask to have a, I like your phrasing of having a critical eye look at. I would like to know, again, about the trees that exist there. Are they ash trees that are going to die? No, are not. they oak trees? Or what's, what are they, the, the species? Um, and, but they should, they should know that. Yeah. And that oh. should be noted by them. There's a, there's a tree there that is, it looks unusual. I don't know what kind it is. I'm sure that, you know, we have people that, could say what it is, but it was very clearly saved when all the other trees, which included box elder trees and hackberries and... Communication uh, item, though. Any critical yeah. conversation points about this? Thank you. Thank you. A lot of trees were taken out. These were the ones that were saved. Okay. Well, we Anything five, else five on this way. item? And, and then it was, a spa it was a spacing between the... What was the spacing between the... I said spacing between hardscapes, so... The fact that you have a parking lot and then a couple feet of grass, and then, and then you have a pathway, path. so they none of none of these pieces actually directly connect to one another. So how do you guys maintain that? Is that grass likely to survive? Right, um, right. Would it be better with more or less spacing between? And as we talked earlier, take a secondary look at. 
those parking stall dimensions and just confirm that the parking that the parking layout actually works. Right. Right. And all of that, as I look this over, led me to make my pseudo uh, mo motion to build the pickleball courts, but nothing else at this time. And I think you would rather hear this now rather than uh, going with this uh, timeline thing and come back for approval of the bid and potentially have the whole bid rejected because it's a faulty design. And then we start over next year. But if I'm understanding correctly, as this is not a voting item, I can't, I think the critical conversations are, I love that, that that's great. Like we're reviewing it, let's give feedback where we have it and see mm -hmm. what we hear back. That does raise the question, when did we have our chance to vote on this? When we approve or disapprove or kill the contract? We have to look, Scott, that this, the budget was put in place, where it's moving along, yeah, that I, I, I understand, yeah. I, I, you know, I. Is it possible for this, when it's let out for bid, to have all of these things as options? In other words, we can choose option A, pickleball court only. Uh, option B is the next thing, option C, option D, option E, and then we can pick and choose out of the bids because sometimes these bids are all lumped together of the whole thing or nothing, and other times it, these bids are done with options where then uh, the various uh, commissions, committees, council, can decide do they want to include option C or not option D and we'll take E and not F and so on. But if it's all lumped in one big thing, you can't break it out. So and, yeah, and I think it, it I, yeah, I think it would make the most sense to get, get as much of it built the first time and, and get it done and, you know, to, to build the pickleball courts but then not have a, an access road to get to it, to build the pickleball courts and then not have a, a parking lot for people to park in. There is parking lots. There's two large parking lots just to the east. Right. In, Very in, large. Yeah. Okay. More to come in the future for that then. McKee, changing room update. Thank you, Sarah. That is, I d just provided some, some pictures for you. Question on the pictures. Yes. I went there two days ago and looked at this under construction there. And the first thing that struck me, as you can see in the pictures right there, why is there such a large gap at the bottom? It's about a foot high. And these are changing rooms for people. And there's this foot high gap at the bottom of the wall. That's very odd. Ventilation so that's what we're getting? The, that, with, a, that, with a gap this wide. With little kids running around that, you know, can look under the wall or whatever. Well, kind I, don't, of stuff. I don't think they can look well, underneath there. Why was it a changing room that has this big gap at the bottom? I can see, you know, the top of it, as for, you can see air, in the pictures, are open. For, for airflow, I would suspect. But it's a changing room. Would you have a gap like this for a bathroom? I think the. it looks to me like it's in part for safety measure to keep the floor as dry as possible because all everyone's running in and out with their little wet feet and so dripping suits. Okay, um, any other questions on the changing rooms? Can, can I ask who you guys had designed it or where it came from? Do you know? It, it was um, designed by, um, I haven't been over to look at it. I was just wondering right, if you right. have. The pictures are accurate. Yeah, I know. I could, I could find out who, who designed it, Katie, if that. I was just curious. Sure. And as a side remark, thank you for fixing the one thing that I always regretted on the splash pad design. Oh, what's that? I designed the splash pad. Oh, you did? Yeah. So thank you for fixing the one thing we always regretted. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> no change of room. Oh, oh interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Fern Pond Swallow House update. Get that. Um, I did include a link. We've got the, we've got the, Fern Pond Swallow House has been, has been uh, erected. So we're, we're in good shape. Then a COVID nineteen update. Uh, I did include uh, in your the. What we're following is we're following the Forward Dane 
a reopening plan and actually we're hoping that we're going to be entering phase two on June 9th uh, and actually we do have a, a meeting in the afternoon with the city administrator and the mayor uh, regarding uh, what they're you know there's some potential things that we could um, open up if we if we do get into phase uh, phase two which which would include uh, a playgrounds potentially it does also indicate a uh, splash pad and, and those kinds of things. So we're we're really in conversations regarding the splash pad because I'm, I'm sure everybody is interested in potentially having the splash pad open. I, I will tell you, it will take, you know, a couple, three, three weeks to get that up and running. Uh, and the worry always is that we get get the lines cleared out and get the water running through it and then we end up with a, with a leak which would need to be repaired, so. Um, so it's entirely untested at this point to date? P pardon me? It's untested to date? Right. The, the, it's, the water still, it's, still, it's still winterized. It's still winterized. With the possibility that may it may not be opened at all this that, year? That, that's correct. That's a possibility. So that's kind of an update on that. And I don't know if you have any questions on that. Uh, and then I, I did want to include uh, the CIP, uh, the, the mayor's proposed CIP uh, in McGaw. What were the... Uh, gosh, what were the changes in McGaw now? Um, like removing the 15,000 security camera project? Yep, that was, yep, that was, that was. Last year. Oh, sorry, yep. Yep, Just that was done. Tennis court funding. Yeah, that might, that might have been what was, what was taken out of there compared to what we proposed, what was proposed. Um, a uh, couple points I want to make. From McGaw? Yes. Um, we're just going on the upcoming projects. Is that what we're reviewing here? Upcoming projects? Okay. Mm -hmm. Upcoming projects for 2024, new volleyball posts for $10,000 against the levy. And of course, as everybody should know, the levy is our property taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The bill that all of us pay. Uh, 10,000 to replace the posts. I see absolutely no justification for this. I've looked at the posts. Yeah, they lean inwards a little. They're solid as a rock and they do not need to be straight up. That's what the cables and the ropes are for uh, to tear them out and spend 10,000 to put new straighter posts up is a real waste of $10,000 worth of money. They're up right now, they're straight. There's been various groups out there playing volleyball for uh, possibly a couple months. They're out there about every evening. They could be out well, nine o'clock, not now, but they've been out every evening playing this. And uh, the posts leaning well, a little that's, bit that's what have, do not affect the game at all. Uh, so I would like to see that 10,000 struck from the project, from this list right here. Um, by and, comparison, and actually, the the time to do that will be when we when the park commission recommends their CIP next time around. This these were changes that the mayor made to the to the park commission's approved CIP. So we already the park commission already approved the CIP, which included that. But certainly, there there would be an opportunity for us to do that next year, if you wanted to. And what I wanted to do is, is I just budget. This is a CIP proposal for 2021 that is going through the process right now, isn't it? So th these are th these are what the mayor. This is what the mayor changed to the CIP that okay. the park commission approved. So so it, it you know at this point we don't you know you don't have an opportunity to remove. This is just an informational thing. So in other words, I'm going to the council to speak against this. Well, you can, okay. you can, sir. But I guess what I'm saying is, when we go through the CIP process next year, we can we can eliminate that from okay. the 2024. Yeah. That one is a 2024 item. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and I think you're right, Sarah. What 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 he did change is he removed the tennis court funding from 2024. And I think that was uh, and actually what what the mayor uh, and McKee. Uh, what the. Um, well, what he, what he, 
Well, what he did, um, gosh, I should have made a note of what he, uh, what he, what he did at McKee. But he made he made some minor. Oh, here it is down on the bottom. Um, dumpster enclosure reallocated to partially fund siding for the shelter in 2024. Okay, that's so, the, that's the McKee page. Yep, that's what the mayor changed. Okay, on on the McGaw page, I I I know the way to read this thing. You look at these uh, projects here, and then the first from past an amendment here was a 2018 through 2027 CIP amendment. Then the next the next uh, year or so after that, a couple of years, was 2020 to 2029 CIP update. Yep. And the most recent one is the 2021 so that's, that, to 2030 that, Yeah, that's CIP. what the mayor, that's what the mayor yes. removed. That's, that's what changes, that, yep, that's of what which I'm not sure what the tennis court there is. As far as the upcoming projects, it has the, in the future, 2024 new volleyball post. I want to point out that the prior funding authorized but project not yet completed as of 12 31 19 the 2016 water and sewer for shelter, 35,000, you do not have that anymore. The carryover was not approved. That's an error. That's not on there anymore. That was just discussed earlier this year. Okay, okay. That was part of carryover. Okay. And then in McKee, like I say, he, he did reallocate the, um, the dumpster enclosure, $30,000 to the uh, funding the, the, the siding replacement for the shelter in 2024. And then, and then this is the big one here, um, upcoming projects. He uh, eliminated the Chicory Meadow, Chicory, Chicory Meadow uh, tennis court replacement along with the Swan Creek tennis replacement. So I think he's kind of signaling the, the same that, you know, the park system, tennis courts will be at McKee and all the other other tennis courts that we have within the park system are going to be are going to be you know, removed, I guess, if you would. So I wanted to give you that. So in other words, we will have a McKee tennis court complex, and we will have a McGaw pickleball court complex, rather than tennis one or two of each spread out. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Just because uh, you know the tennis courts are hard to maintain and. We don't have the capacity to do it. Then we just have. I don't know if it's something that can, I, I would like to, us to discuss process because Patrick does make the point that part of what is driving what at uh, Fahey Fields is just bypass this commission. And then uh, I had raised an issue about the um, the master plan, the comprehensive plan, and an alder who was adding an amendment to the uh, comprehensive plan directing that the Parks Commission has to find or should find a place for a new community park in a certain part of the city. And all of those might be good ideas, but it just, that's, and, and one may say that's politics, at the same time, the process eliminates the body that's supposed to oversee the park system. And that isn't necessarily the right way to do things. It's messy. Everything's messy, but this is a little bit, leaves a, a taste in the mouth. It's doesn't seem like it's open government to me. Yeah, and then why are we here if we don't get to say things, vote on things. I, I raised a question last meeting. Uh, Katie was here. Chris was zooming in on the screen right here. Uh, you heard my suggestion. You guys are, have some kind of background in park planning. 
David Gerger has told us he has some background in park planning. I forget the details or what it was. And especially for McGaw, I have a very high interest in McGaw uh, for a couple decades. And do you have any interest in like your version of planning some of these out to see what we would think of your design versus Corey's versus Phil's versus any outsider, you know, $10,000, $20,000 outside engineering consultant? I guess my, my opinion would be that that is why we hire consultants. That, that, that may be my profession in some respects, but that is why we hire prof consultants. We can get into some issues with conflicts of interest and in, in non-compete agreements and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know exactly where the line is, but we have to walk it between, you know, uh, functioning in this role and not, you know, competing with our uh, employment. Mm -hmm. And I am very much willing to review plans and see if there are any comments that I have, but I don't necessarily want to be the one responsible for developing the plans in the first place. And, 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 and I, think, I think you certainly performed that role for us tonight with the, with the critical eye is, yep. you know, that's... So you would look at it as somebody presents a plan, then you would critique it and say, this should go here, this doesn't work, that should be this way, such and such. And we can use that help, I as, think absolutely. Best, I don't want to speak for both of us, but I think that's the best way for us to, to okay. be helpful rather than starting with a clean slate. Okay. Absolutely. And David Gardner has made some comments along those lines. I, I can't remember exactly or quote anything, but it seems like he has, I think, had an interest. I have an interest, and I'm not in the profession, <laughs> but I would like to draw some things out and see what people like with them. Mm -hmm. When's my chance? Sure. No conflict of interest with me. <laughs> I don't worry. All right. <laughs> New business. Anything, Scott? Uh, nope. Nope. Well, uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted on the, um, which I try to do with the, the COVID and, and, you know, when I'm sending out letters and all of those kinds of things, just kind of keep you in the loop on what I'm, what I'm working on. Uh, I did want to know, as far as the COVID situation and everything, I know there's that whole chart from Dane yeah, County yeah. and all the steps and all the criteria and everything right. like that. Right. Currently, what's our current status right now for us and for the public? Uh, as, as I would take it, you're not taking any reservations, mm -hmm. you're not collecting any fees for mm -hmm. any reservations, Correct. shelters, fields, anything. Correct. So there is no zero revenue coming in. Correct. Uh, but what I do see in the park right next to me, because I can hear them and if I walk over there I can see them, there's tennis going on, there's volleyball going on, there's baseball games going on, all um. four fields. Uh, there's shelter parties going on, and you're getting zero for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That may I, I, so. My I guess my question overall is: Is it a position of maybe coming from the city attorney? I think McKee Shelter would be the worst situation. What if six different groups all show up at 10 a.m. and they all want that shelter, and nobody's got a valid reservation? So who gets it? Is it a position of the city of? It's the Wild West out here, it's open season. Whoever can you know, get their hand on the table first gets the McKee shelter, and the city is staying out of it, saying you guys fight it out, versus if the city gave a reservation and collected a fee, city likes to collect money, then the city is saying, then the city is promoting social gatherings, which is kind of contrary to Dane County and COVID and whatever guidelines about no social gatherings, except for you know six foot distancing and all that stuff. What, what, what is our status currently? You're getting no money, but things are getting used. Absolutely, uh, and, and the parks are, are public property, and, and we're hoping that people abide by the by the rules that Dane County Health has has provided. Um, so it's all kind of the honor system, but you're not giving any reservations. You're not no. collecting any fees. No. Everybody no. is on their own. Correct. Okay. Bathrooms aren't open. Would make the parties a little shorter, but <laughs> not actually from what I've seen, strangely. All right, so then next two Park Commission meetings for August 6th and September 3rd, as Scott has noted, that we don't meet in July. So I take a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjournment. Excuse me. Second, if we patch or, <laughs> or do our, or now our, we're just adjourned. We don't have to who, take a who, second, who, who, Oh, second. Oh, thank you. Second by Katie. I apologize. And I'll call the time at 931.
Yeah. Wonderful. Oh. Meeting adjourned. We didn't vote. Nine oh, sorry. <laughs> 9.31, By the time we vote, it's going to be 9.32. Oh, gosh, that would ruin everything. Yes, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm good. I gave leeway. Okay. I vote aye. Okay, thanks. Yeah, sorry, I'm awkward, too. Yeah. Yeah, good, good conversation, thanks.